I love that message for all ages and the image of what lies beyond the doors that we travel through in life. In many cases, what lies beyond those doors is love. All sorts and kinds of love, sometimes, expe sometimes expected, sometimes unexpected, at least in the form that it appears. For Lucy Pevensey, it was adventure that lies on, on the other side of that wardrobe door. And the adventure she gets is full of so many things, violence and fear and awe, and even the chance to become a queen. But more than anything, what lies beyond that door in the wardrobe is love. The love of Mr. Tumnus, the fawn. The love of the beaver couple. The fierce, all-encompassing love of Aslan, the lion. She also finds renewed and deepened love for her siblings, even for the kind of hard-to-love brother Edmund. It is a magical door in every way. Well, we all encounter such doorways, even if they aren't quite as dramatic or magical. I can think of some doors I've ventured through which had love on the other side. I picture the door of Becky Chop's mid-century modern apartment near the University of Chicago. I was just beginning my graduate school adventure. Professor Chop was the director of the ministry program, and every year at the start of the year, she'd host a party for the returning and the new students. Well, as I walked up to that door, I had no indication, like Lucy had no indication, that my life was about to change. When I walked through that door, one of the first people I met was Amy, a third year student. She was sitting on a couch. I sat next to her. She later told me that she was there to scout out the new students to see if anyone intrigued her. We talked for at least an hour and, well, she intrigued me. She was a sassy Christian feminist. I really don't remember anything else about the party. So Amy and I became good friends over the next six months. Then we dated. Three years later, we were married. Like any marriage, we've had our moments of challenge, but we're going strong, maybe stronger than ever, 33 years in. So it was amazing love that lay beyond that door at Becky Chop's house. I picture the glass main door at the old Moose Lodge in Appleton. That's the building that the Fox Valley Unitarian Universalist Fellowship had when I first encountered that congregation in 1990. The Ministerial Search Committee took me to check out their building. Constructed a hundred years earlier, it had been first a German Methodist church, then the American Legion Hall, then the Moose Lodge, and then nine years before I first traveled in that doorway, it had been bought by the small 50-member Unitarian Universalist congregation. So I stepped out of that minivan and looked toward that building. Ugly, really ugly, and shabby. That was most glaringly evident in the fact that it had this kind of Metal siding that was all the vogue in the 1890s that had, like, completely rusted. Oh, my God, I thought, I, I can't be a minister in that building. So we walked through that glass door into the small entryway, the, the smell of the men's urinal in the basement wafting up. We walked through another set of doors into the combined fellowship hall sanctuary space and ugly, shabby, too. That looked like a really good place for the Moose Lodge to have poker games and fish fries, but not a good place for worship services. Honestly, I never grew to like that building. It, uh, its ugliness was only surpassed by how poorly it functioned as a church. But alas, a congregation is not a building. Whether it meets in an old rundown Moose Lodge or just off the top of my head, a Frank Lloyd Wright landmark. And the people through that door, starting with the search committee, well, those people had a lot of love in their hearts. 
Love was what was waiting behind that ugly door. I picture the sliding rear door of a Chrysler minivan at a retreat center in Santa Barbara, California. So the congregation I served in Appleton grew until it was a large church, and for the first time, I was invited to join the annual retreat of the senior ministers of large UU churches. Well, when I was there, I seized on an invitation on the second day to join um, some colleagues on an outing to the Santa Barbara County wineries. So I slid open that door and climbed in that van with five other colleagues who I had never met, and they mostly didn't know each other either. We spent the next nine hours together. By the dessert course at dinner, we decided to form a peer review group, a group where together we would support and critique each other's ministries. It turned out that my best friends in the UU ministry, some of my best friends in the world, were in that van. Love was what was waiting behind that minivan door. The last door I picture is a different sort of door. This wasn't a door I ventured through, rather love came through this door toward me. This door was my daughter's body. So the plan was that my wife would be with our daughter and our our son-in-law as a secondary coach when it was time for her to have her baby. Well, her labor began a little before New Year's Day, and, well, it happens that I was there because I was off work, and so there I was. And Unbeknownst to me, my daughter had seen a video in her birth preparation class about a father who was the coach of his daughter through, uh, through delivery. And at the end of that, evidently, my daughter kind of teared up and looked at her husband and said, maybe I want my dad here too. So there I was in the delivery room, not prepared in the least, the third string labor coach, with the sole task of getting fresh, cold washcloths between contractions. This time, unlike a lot of doorways, I knew love was on the other side, but I had no idea what this love was going to be like or how a grandparent's love is different from other kinds of love. There was a whole lot of mystery. And then beautiful holiday emerged into the world, the first baby born in the new year in her county, love was what was waiting behind that door. So every story of love waiting beyond a door is different. I don't share these four stories as instructive in any way other than they show the variety of the types of love that we can find. I also share these to invite you to get in touch with the stories of your own life where you found love beyond a doorway. Can you picture some of those doorways in your life? Maybe one for you is the doorway into the landmark building or the atrium, new addition, here at First Unitarian Society. Love comes in many, many forms. It makes me think about the old story of the, there being like 50 words for snow in the Inuit language. Polysynthesis is a linguistic idea uh, that's characteristic of the Inuit language and other Eskimo Aleut languages, where there's a base word like snow, and then it can be added onto with a variety of endings that really have different meanings. Well, when you think about it, here in Wisconsin, We have a lot of different expressions for snow. Now, they may not have like a root word, but it's a similar idea. So picture in your mind for a minute, flurries, blizzard, a fine snow that you can barely see, slush, frost, fresh snow, wet snow, yellow snow, sorry about that last one. These are very different pictures, right? They give you a different feeling. 
Well, it's the same with love. So the ancient Greeks were wise enough to have this wide assortment of words for love. Here's some of them. There's eros, romantic, passionate, embodied love. There's philia, which is affectionate love, the love of deep friends. There's storge, which like philia, is like philia, but within the context of family connections. Agape, selfless, universal, godly love. Ludus, playful love. Pragma, the enduring, mature love that's built on commitment and work. Philotia, which is self-love and comes in a couple different forms. One is compassion for oneself, warts and all. The other is narcissism, not so good. And then there's mania, also not so good. That's obsessive love. Well, when I opened that door to Professor Chop's house and met Amy, I encountered philia with a strong presence of eros in the air. There was also a dose of ludus. Over time, it grew into pragma with philia, eros, storge, and ludus mixed in. Love that lasts a while, cycles through different forms and seasons. The door into Appleton's old Moose Lodge turned UU congregation was a doorway to agape. At its best, that congregation I served was a vessel for agape. Philia lay beyond that minivan door in Southern California, and Storge lay beyond the door of my daughter's body in the form of our granddaughter. So it's challenging in English that we use love for such a wide variety, different kinds of love. And all too often, we've sort of settled into what, what I think of as sort of a lowest common denominator, hallmark, one-size-fits-all understanding of love that's sentimental, schlocky, shallow, and unembodied. And when we do think about love and its more complicated variants, we often put agape at the top. There's a hierarchy. And the ancient Greeks knew better than this. All forms of love, except narcissism and mania, are important and valuable in their own way. White Northern Hemisphere culture has too often neglected and even assaulted eros. This is translated into a devaluing of the human body and anything that we somehow associate particularly with the body, like the earth, women, black people, indigenous people, people of color, the wide varieties of human sexuality, to name a few. Yes, we need to have more true agape in our world, but we also need to have wider and deeper philia and more life-giving eros. What would it be like if we had an embodied, passionate, even romantic relationship with the earth? What would it be like if we fiercely loved and valued female, black, brown, and indigenous bodies? What if we valued them so much that there was no more violence against these bodies? I have to say that I hesitated to do a sermon on love today, on Valentine's Day. Our culture's simultaneous devaluing and fetishizing of romantic sexual love has really commandeered this holiday. And love is a lot more than that narrow understanding. So let's instead make this day truly about the wide varieties of love. Let's make this a day in which we celebrate all the times we've traveled through doorways and found love, whatever its form is. Let's celebrate that love in one form or another may be beyond the very next door we walk through. And so in this spirit, I wish you a very happy Valentine's Day. <laughs>